Peter, once again, thank you very much for uh, getting to this interview. Actually, I was a bit surprised when I get a message from you. <laughs> uh, when, when I saw that uh, you are responding and you know first thing that I found about you when I was preparing to the interview is that you were ambassador at the badminton special olympics so the, yes. like, yeah, my question is the following uh, responding to my request being ambassador at special olympics uh, is that a, an openness to the world is a kind of your badminton lifestyle is it a part of your philosophy why did you decide to, to give the interview and uh, take it in, in such part of events? Um, I, I think first, first of all, I think you are, uh, you're pretty much right in your, your way of analyzing that, that aspect. Uh, I, I've always been, been quite open to, to everybody contacting me as far as my time allows it and my uh, uh, then, if, if I can feel that uh, the request is a uh, is a uh, is a serious one, and uh, there is some people behind behind the request that are actually you know they have an idea and they have a, there is a purpose of what they're doing, then uh, it always interests me. Um, and uh, whether it's a special cause or it's like, uh, uh, of course, now before you you make contact to me, I get especially after I started the academy, I get a, like a a lot of, of, of different kind of, re of requests, so I have to be quite good at selecting. <laughs> yeah. And I have, uh, I, have, I have like, I don't know how many emails waiting uh, for replies as well. Um, but some of them, if I feel it's a serious uh, request, and then, uh, then I will answer it. And you were very, very prompt in the way you answered. And I knew that, okay, you are very passionate about badminton. And you're from Ukraine, which I think it's very interesting that you are uh, you're doing this from Ukraine, which is not a badminton country in that way, but uh, for me, it's it's important that we get other parts of the of the badminton uh, world to appear uh, on the map. So, so that's also part of it. And uh, on top of you yeah. asked me about special special Olympics, it's uh, it's a natural way for me sometimes to say to say yes to these kind of uh, ambassador things. And um, I was very very impressed and very inspired by by this trip because. To, to to be close to these athletes uh, and to experience the passion and uh, they had uh, they had going for them was really really special for me uh, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter, for responding. Actually, on on the twentieth of April, uh, you also celebrate like a first year anniversary of your academy. Uh, I understand that it's too early or maybe to make some conclusions yeah, and it's only the beginning of the past, but what can you say about the first results? Are you satisfied with the first year of the academy? Maybe have you met your goals? Yeah, I think if you the, the correct date was, would, would probably be 1st of May and actually yeah. uh, may, maybe a bit later, but that's, that doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's about one year now. and. Uh, I knew that uh, when I started this project, it was uh, based on on many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons was that I, I wanted to create a role for me where I was a bit more free, uh, so I could mm -hmm. I could work with players the way I, I want to. I like to work with players in everyday life, if you say. I like to to work with the process with uh, with the players that I uh, that I work with, uh, and not only uh, you know. It's not for me. It's not in and out. It's a it's a it's a process, and uh, um, I also wanted to be more free in the way I work. If I go in as a national coach, no mm -hmm. matter where, uh, I will be more tied to. Uh, how can you say? You know, there will be some kind of uh, some demands and some limits and some frame yeah. that I have to uh, I have to be inside that frame and. Uh, I'm not really good at that. <laughs> so, I understand. So you, I, understand need, you. I, I need. I need. To, and also, my life is. Uh, I, I tried so many things in my life so far. So I need to feel a bit free. Also, in the way that I have two daughters that are 10 and 14, and I need to be able to to do things with them when when I want to do these things with them, and not not a badminton calendar deciding when I can be with my daughters and, and not. So that's, that's, part of, that's part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I had this idea for many years and uh, I, I still feel that the badminton world is, I don't, I don't know if it's ready for this, but uh, maybe not yet totally, but 
um, but it's 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 getting there, and uh, I I I hope that I could make people. And when I say people, I mean clubs, I mean national teams, individuals, yeah. uh, to see badminton in a more uh, convenient way, way, and not only that you have to go through the the, the big associations and the way that that, that badminton is is run today. It is still a very, very old school system that we have compared to golf or tennis or all the likes of that. Um, and when I say that, don't misunderstand me because I, I'm brought up in a system like that. So I also yeah. have a lot of respect for the for the association. So <laughs> it's 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 not to be against the associations, not at all. But it's to maybe create a different way of saying, okay, uh, why not? I, I could work with different associations. You know, they can use me as a kind of a tool to maybe improve things for their players. Um, and I don't, maybe some of these academ academies that are active right now is uh, they take a bit of ownership for their players and I, I have mm -hmm. actually no interest in that. So yeah. I'm not going to go in and say, I'm not going to go in and say this is my player, this is, he's from my academy or uh, of course I, I, I'm happy if players coming to my academy they do good results but I don't want to take away the, you know, I, I really respect that there's a lot of coaches Who's, who's been doing a, a great amount of work with these players and want to follow them. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can assist in, in some parts of the game and say, okay, uh, I can help them in, uh, and, and push them a, a bit further in some, uh, on, a lot further maybe in, in some areas. And if mm -hmm. I can do that and, and they can still work with their coach, it's, uh, it's, that, that would be uh, quite a good solution for me. Yeah, uh, interest, interesting position, you know, uh, Peter, when, uh, when I read about your academy and saw that you're a head coach, uh, first thought that I uh, had, uh, it's like, uh, uh, are you more like a manager or do you, do you envision yourself like a coach? Because I understand that when you are opening academy and if it's like an academy, if you have to manage coaches, if you have to manage academy, you have a lot of tasks that are not related to the badminton directly, yeah? So, Peter Gate, um, what will be your role probably in, in five, ten years? Do you uh, see yourself more like a trainer and someone manage, uh, like uh, yes, there's no, a director it, it, or, or there, you will be a manager? <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, question because I don't know where we're going to be in. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I would say that the, the direction is uh, right now I will be a lot on court. Uh, and I'm on court every single day. When I'm at home and for the past year, Mm -hmm. Running this academy, I have had only a few weeks of uh, holiday, doing uh, a few weeks of uh, legends or ambassador things and etc. Mm -hmm. And the rest, I've been every day at the academy. So I am with my players, and I, I am on the floor and 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 working with them uh, every day. So it's more like um, a co coaching, yeah. Right now, more. That, that's where we, are, that's where we are. That's where we are. That's mm -hmm. where we are now. Uh, maybe in the future, you know, there is a. This is a new thing. So I did not know one year ago. I did not know how would people react towards this, and uh, uh, how would they how would they approach us, and in, in what areas would they need us, and so. Mm -hmm. uh, but and it's it, for me, it's still a process. I still think that associations and that they need to understand how they can use our academy, and in a different way than than they are, maybe they are used to. Yeah. And we have some we had some uh, really good examples on on national coaches approaching us and working with one player, also arriving with one player and and working with us and uh, continue to, to, to try and implement these things that we're working on and uh, for me mm -hmm. that, that's a very interesting process. So so we wanted to adapt to the needs of, of the player uh, no matter uh, from where and, in, in, and we actually did that. So we have players on short term, we have players on long term and the way I work with them, and the way I have Scott Evans, who's an assistant coach, and mm -hmm. uh, and another guy, Joshua Ivo, who's also connected to the academy, and, and I think I, I, I you have to see me as more as a mentor. So it's it's not only what happens on court. You know, these these players that are full members here, they use me as a sparring like almost 24/7. Yeah, uh, th that's what. Uh, that's why really I asked you because I understand that Peter Gate and uh, your trainers you have a limited time. And for instance, when it comes to the scaling of academy, uh, will you consider like op op uh, options like opening branch of the academy? Uh, I don't know in somewhere in another country. 
Mm. I, I will <laughs> consider that, and I'm, I am already consider, considering that, because yeah. I, had, I had quite a lot of requests for that. Uh, yeah, so well. I am actually al already considering it, uh, but I'm I'm very careful because I need to be 100% sure that that's what we do here in Denmark mm -hmm. is is working. So I I wanted to show myself and and uh, the team around and uh, you know I need to be sure that okay what we the setup we have here in Copenhagen it's working mm -hmm. and we can do things we can help players and and so on and and now we have a better base to work from and. Um, yes, I had I had a lot of requests from other other countries and uh, especially India and uh, yeah. uh, to to set up a franchise or and maybe um, I will do that if I find the right connection, the right network, you know, the right yeah. people to do this. Uh, then then I I will consider to do that. But I I think we have to take it step by step. And yes, of course, you, it is also my vision that someday. I may take a, a, a little bit, slightly different role in this, mm -hmm. uh, as you say. I don't know if you call it a manager, or, but the mentor, the mentoring part is still a very high priority for me and something that I, I value a lot. Great, great. So wish wish you good luck in developing your network and hope to see that uh, Peter Gay's Academy some someday in Ukraine also. <laughs> By the way, uh, well, if why not? <laughs> yeah, if after our interview, for instance, uh, Ukrainian coaches or Ukrainian professional players uh, decide that they would like to, to get a coaching from Peter Gate, how the process will look like? How they can apply for being a part of your academy? Well, they 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 can apply by going on petergate.com, mm -hmm. and they will they will under the academy section there will be a a request form where they can uh, apply to us and. Uh, with some uh, some standard info, and then we will get back to them, and then we will we will have a talk uh, about what what are they you know what are their needs, what, mm -hmm. why are they contacting the academy, and uh, we'll see if we can meet their demands. Great. Do you have any selection criteria, for instance, like age or I don't know, male or being it, professional or not? No, uh, it, it it depends on the level. Uh, so we, we can have young players attached. We can have older, uh, not older players, but. So we also have programs where we have players only taking individual sessions. Mm -hmm. So if they don't fit into our our team session program, or our, then we will arrange individual sessions. And some players are doing both. They are doing both group sessions and individual sessions. And so it's it's a mix uh, depending on their level. Yeah. So they need they need to on the group sessions they need to fit in in some kind of level. If they don't, we have to try and find an alternative setup. Mm -hmm. But in any case, you are open for negotiation and like uh, seeing yes. what, what the player can do and then yes. uh, normally, the program. Normally, yeah. we, we will ask for a, a video uh, of them uh, playing and we will have an idea about where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. You know, uh, I saw that you have players from many countries. Actually, I saw some videos from your academy. And um, I, then I read uh, your interview to Emma Lolik uh, when actually you were like a national coach in, in national team of France. And you told to Emma, it's like a direct quote, uh, I have learned a lot for the last one and a half years. It's been really learning from, for me. I learned a lot about the French culture. Uh, and uh, that's that is my question, yeah? What's the difference maybe in, in the culture uh, of France uh, players and Denmark players? And the following question, uh, what do you think is so special in, in mentality of Danish players that uh, they can dominate uh, European badminton for the moment? Um, I think that that's, if you look at, first of all, there is a, the big issue here is, is the tradition and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and mainly the last thing is that the badminton culture in Denmark is extremely strong and it's been, it's been developing for many, many years. Uh, it means that coaches, players, the whole environment uh, from you when you grow up as a young player is Everybody they know they have to work long term. They think long term. Mm -hmm. They don't think next tournament or like that. They think okay, if you want to be as good as possible, you're gonna to have to develop these areas. Um, and other countries in Europe are still thinking. For me, uh, even though I think being in France was a was a big experience and uh, it's a very passionate country about badminton and they have a lot of. A lot of uh, you know coaches very passionate and interested in, in, in doing as good as possible. Same with players. Um, 
but they don't have a you know like a standard culture. They don't have a role models to look to to look up to and say, okay, you have to do like this to to become a world champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Denmark, we've been very lucky to have new players, new personalities coming up over and over for many many years. So so in France, you you maybe that will happen, you know, because I for me they are they definitely have the potential to do that. Um, and we need other countries than Denmark in the badminton world. So that that was also part of my reason to go into France was to try and motivate and um, uh, and inspire them to to put up a structure that can do this. Yeah. But as as a people, as a culture of, of French people compared to Danish, they are they are different than, than Danish people. And and in badminton, it will be a lot about repeating every day, doing the same stuff over and over to mm-hmm. to 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 become a master of these uh, these areas here um, and if you're not used to doing that from a very young age and suddenly you have me coming and saying but this is <laughs> it's like normal okay we're gonna have to do this again and again and again uh, you know, it's just a minor example of of, of, of of the understanding of this is, is, is that when they are brought up as young people they are they have a different angle towards things yeah so, uh, so it's more about like a long way long-term thinking yeah when when you are, it's, you, you, hmm? you don't have to in Denmark you don't have to explain to you know the coach and the player they will both know okay this is about long term this is not about only the next tournament uh, of course we try to do as good as we can but but we are thinking long term we also I think Denmark they have a very strong setup for how they bring people also if you are a good young player you everybody knows it's not easy to make the step from 16 17 years old and then go to the seniors and 19 20 years old mm-hmm. and becoming one of the best seniors in the world like Victor or like Anna Sensenson yeah that's not an easy step to do so so you that's why if the basics are in order if if the basic technique basic footwork basic physique basic tactical understanding uh, basic mental state of mind uh, approaching games and etc if if this basics if these basics are in a, in a very high level then they have the grounds to to go high mm-hmm. if so, the basics are not in order you're going to have to uh, at some point you know it, it's going to be difficult to take the next step it mm-hmm. might be enough in the in the young young generation you know to do well but if you want to go and take the next step you, you you're going to need the basics to be in place and and Denmark are so good at putting in the basics and I believe that a country like France could be equally, you know, in, in years they could be equally uh, strong, but it, it will take a lot of years before everybody, before the culture. And maybe also in some parts, what I also did a lot of effort to try and say in France was that for me, I think it's okay for me that, that France will develop their own culture. You yeah. know, they don't have to be like Denmark. They, they, they can do things uh, different and still develop a very, very good uh, badminton culture. So, so it's also about finding your own ways in, in, in this. But there is certain basics in badminton that you're gonna have to need to be in place. Interesting. And, and these are these are the basics that I worked a lot with, you know, to try and, and get people to to understand these basics uh, in order to put in the structure that I, I believe is very important. Mm-hmm. So, to your to your mind, uh, how do you think? Uh, what comes first uh, when? when the country or when the person would like to, to achieve like high results? Is it more like about hard work, it's a talent, uh, uh, dedication, <laughs> or maybe even technologies? Because uh, there are no, a that, lot of buzz, that, buzzwords that, around that word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I, how, uh, I, I might be an old school guy, but technology is not the word that comes uh, towards my mind first. <laughs> um, um, no, for me, it's... it's uh, uh, I, I, yeah, if I want to answer that question first, I still believe that in badminton we are very, we are still quite unexperienced in using technology and using research, mm-hmm. using uh, big data to to analyze the players, to analyze the game. And so we are still on a on a, on a low level compared to other sports like American sports and so on. They are extremely on an extremely high level on this part, and, and badminton is not at that level. So we can definitely learn something on that part. Looking at talent or or, yeah. or hard work, it's it's uh, the more and more I work with this, uh, <laughs> it, it's not an easy question because uh, you 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 will have 
cases that will not that will appear out of the ordinary, um, and meaning that that some countries will develop players where you say, okay, you just have everything here. You have a talent, you have a, a guy or girl who is willing to do hard work, uh, and that is the combination that you look for. If you look aside from that, then then you want that, that you're not going to go anywhere in badminton if you don't have the hard work. Yeah, it's not, not going to happen. It's it, it, and it's going to take many years to develop a good men singles or a good lady singles. It's not something you do in a few years, uh, and that is the reason why in in our sport that we don't see. Yes, we saw Carolina Marin coming from Spain and and a few other, but it's 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 not every day you're going to see new countries appear in badminton, and and it, it's because it's so extremely difficult to do this. It's going to be a long term plan to develop a, a good men singles or a good lady singles. It's going to take many years, mm -hmm. but I, I, I've never had a feeling that, that it's not possible for other countries to do this. I, I sincerely mean it's possible for, for a lot of countries to take off the fight against Denmark, but they're going to have to do it continuously, and they're going to have to do it on a long-term basis. Yeah. And that's not easy. It's not easy for a country with, no, with not a, you know, a, a historical badminton culture. It's not easy to put up a structure a long-term structure because you need evidence that this is working absolutely absolutely it's about strategy about long-term things yeah uh, actually when, when you see a young player uh, Peter you, you you deal with many players uh, can you like uh, do you have a sort of feeling or like like in, in, I don't know prediction that I see this guy and I, I suppose that uh, he he has a great future ahead Uh, do, you, do you have such feelings when, when you observe someone, when, when someone gets to academy or when you watch uh, mm. playing someone? But of course, there is different parts in this and, 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 and some, some parts of this is, the, is you look at the player and you, you look at the way that the player is, is, is uh, approaching the, the mm. shuttle, how he's hitting the, the shuttle, how he's, is, it, is that a natural feeling or is something uh, not natural? Uh, you look at how some of the most important thing is for me if you put the, the player in a difficult situation either yeah. physically or mentally or both how do, how do the player react with fire in, in, in her eyes or his eyes or with a with an attitude that says um, I don't like when it, when I'm in this position um, all the good players in the world all the, the players that have gone high they like it when, when things are tough when things are difficult when things are against them They get fire in their eyes, and that 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 is that is one of the main things that I look for. If I see this fire, I know, wow, here we have we have options here. We can go far here. Um, yeah, it's then about, I also, it's about I also look at the, yes. Then I also look a lot of uh, the ability of, of how fast you learn. Uh, if you look at all, a lot of the good players, uh, they are like. For example, like Victor, or like uh, Antonsen uh, mm -hmm. coming up from Denmark, I'm, I'm, the way that they they learn from things is that they might do they might do mistakes, they might do uh, you know they are still young players and they might do mistakes in different areas, but they learn from them and they don't repeat these mistakes, and that is that is actually something you see already when they are young players. You see how how do they react towards learning new new things? Maybe some parts is not easy, but they will learn it. And they will the faster the ability to, to learn it and to how can you say to 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 change your your behavior to change your way of doing things uh, that is extremely important and if you're if you're fast at doing that mm -hmm. well, there's no limit of, uh, of how far you can go in my opinion so that, that that's some of the most important things I, I look at and uh, you know question that mental strength how do you think is it something that you can also develop through Uh, some tough matches or so on, or it's something that is already like burnt with you. And uh, <laughs> are there any practices, uh, you know, maybe some secrets from Peter Gate, how how young players, especially uh, those who come from from youngsters to uh, a real badminton, yeah, uh, how how they have can, can develop that mental mental strengths and points. But it, I think it's uh, of course some part of it is 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 how you're you're born, but but a lot of it is how how your youth is you know your younger years, how 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 are you uh, what what is your daily life in these younger years? What is how are you are you practicing? And people are always helping you, always putting a hand on you, uh, says, you know, or or do you have an environment where you have to fight for your 
uh, for your for your way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the more you have to fight for your way when you grow up, uh, you ha- you will have tough competition. You will have older players looking at you and say, "Hey, you're the young guy. You're gonna have to prove to me that you can you can beat me." Uh, in everyday practice, in matches, in in everything. Uh, that way is is that is certainly. Uh, something that will develop the player and mature the player in many ways and give toughness to the player. I also believe, honestly, that, that a coach should be create a comfort uh, mm-hmm. zone, a comfort frame, but I also believe the coach should be putting up high demands and, and be pushing the player. Um, that's how I wanted it when I was a player. And I, I think that the, it's not easy sometimes when you're a coach because you also... Most coaches want their player to like you. <laughs> yeah. and I, I think it's one of the most important things that, that you cannot be dependent on your player liking you because that will put a limit on, on, on how you can push your player. So, so of course, don't yeah, misunderstand me. I, I, I hope that my players would like to work with me, but they don't have to like me. They, they, they have to like to work with me. They have to know that, hey, Peter, what Peter is doing is to, to make me a better player. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when, of course, when you... When when you will be you will be in ups and downs, and when you have downs, you need your coach to put a safe frame frame around you and say, "Hey, I'm here. Uh, I'm not only here if you're winning. I'm also here if you if you have a if you have a loss. I'm here the next day. I'm ready to coach you. I'm ready to practice with you." Yeah, uh, so like that's, both that's sides. The, yeah, you have to you have to do both sides. Yes, and that's that's how I try to do it. And it's not always easy. It's it's uh, it's tricky, but uh, I like that challenge. Great, great. Hope this advice will help to uh, some some players or and coaches who listen to us. Uh, yeah, Peter, it's it's like when you, when you ask when you ask about specific exercises, it's 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 something that you have to as a coach put into daily work, daily practice. I can give you some exercises where I I will specifically try to put the player in a situation where he he or her needs to find her way or find his way. They need to find solutions. Mm-hmm. And that I will do almost every day. Yeah, so like finding solution on on a regular basis. Yeah, so when you yes. meet meet some tough things, uh, you are not getting worried about that at least. Yeah, exactly. You need to adapt. You need to like to to adapt. Yep. Uh, uh, Peter, thanks a lot for your devices. I cannot avoid a few uh, asking you a few questions about your career and about the current state of the badminton. You know, uh, I wrote an article about, and actually a few even, about uh, uh, new world champion Kenta Momota. I'm sure that, that you watched uh, his playing. Uh, what do you think generally about this player? Because he came to the world badminton and during the six months he already become almost a legend. Yeah, you know, because he beat it all, almost everyone and uh, no one could find for a long time a key how to ever play him during the six months. Uh, do you think he is unique, or it's uh, also a sort of like a period in world's badminton that no one can find the the key? Um, how do how do you assess his game? Uh, for me, it's a combination of of exactly the things that you're saying. Um, for me, um, I I see Momota as a as a fantastic player. I really like him. I I like him as I like his style. I like his way of approaching the game. I think he's got. He's got flair. He's got class. He's got a he's got a way of reading the game and a natural way of, of moving and, and and reading you know anticipating the game. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, then I also agree with you that that you know he he was away for for two years and I'm I'm sure I'm 100% sure he would have you know being part of the absolute top and maybe dominating uh, for these two years that he he was away. Uh, now he came back, uh, so and he came back and and, and took over the uh, the number one spot, and uh, that's where he is now. And uh, I think together with Victor and maybe a few others, you're gonna see the, these guys fighting for it for the next. Uh, mm-hmm. But I also think that you you had players like uh, Lin Dan, Li Chong Wei, Chen Long. Um, they are at the last part of their career, and they they mm-hmm. they started to. Um, they they left there, you know. I I stopped more more six years ago. Tao Fik the same. So so there was also kind of a space where you you wanted to see players go in and take this spot and say now it's about us. Yeah. 
and 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 it's 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 been a bit of, it's not been stable so 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 you saw a lot of players being able to beat each other for the last 6 7 years uh, and not only a group of four or five players controlling everything it's and like i think you have time, to accept yeah. yes you you're going to have to accept that it's not it's not like that uh, anymore there is many players that can beat the uh, you know also the top players now you see Kenzo Momoda might be the only one uh, putting up a very, very stable level. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he's good, but I think he's playing at a very, very high level, and I'm deeply impressed with him. But I, I think he's nowhere near his limit. I think he can be a lot better, and I, I also think Victor can be a lot better. So I think they can, hopefully, they can push each other to, to raise the, the bar. And uh, then we will see if, 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 if we're going to find two or three more players being able to, to put a kind of a new group of legends here and uh, definitely Victor and uh, and, uh, and Amorta is, is two of them and yeah. Sunson could be another one uh, uh, and you got then you got a big group of players that are in the, in the contention but they are they play good tournaments and and then they, they go a bit up and down um, and I hope before Olympics they're going to see more players putting you know going into this, uh, okay, pursued, this yeah. group yeah. Uh, so I think it's I think it's a mix, and I think you now we're seeing Victor going back to to being at his best, and uh, it's going to be really really interesting to see how these two guys are fighting it out. And uh, I think Antonsen will try to mix up, and Chen Long might still be in there. Uh, um, Lin Dan and Chong Wei, you know, these are friends of mine, and I I, I respect them hugely, and uh, I hope they they have some shots left in in their <laughs> career. Um, just, but just but they are they they, 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 yeah. they are at the uh, they are at the at the at the end of the of the career. Yeah, you already mentioned like Lin Dan, Li Chengwei, Tao Fik. Uh, who was maybe the toughest guy to play against? Uh, can, can you can you maybe tell that it was harder to play against Tao Fik or Chengwei? Uh, yeah, but I, li I I love playing all of them. But uh, if if I have to put out uh, take out one of them and say he was the toughest one. I think yeah. Lin Dan was uh, was the best player I've, I've played in when I played him in 2008 Olympics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, that, that's. Uh, I don't think I've played any player at, at that kind of level. Because yeah, great. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for responding. Uh, the question is about you. You finished your career like six years ago, and uh, Lin Dan and uh, Chang Wei are still playing, or maybe even they are going to compete at Olympics. How do you think when is the right moment to finish uh, your career and uh, what was maybe the key deciding point for you to finish career at that time? I, I will not be clever in, in saying when is the right moment for Lin Dan or for Chung Wei, but for me, uh, like you're asking, in, in the end, is 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 uh, I I had a feeling that I I, ha I have given everything, mm -hmm. and uh, my body and mind was also telling me, Peter. Uh, now, now it's about time. And um, uh, after finishing my career, and after I, I, I have had no second thoughts. I have had no regrets. I have had no f bad feelings. I only had a positive feeling, saying this was the right time. Um, no more, no more <laughs> on court for me. Um, and no, nah, this was uh, this was a good feeling. Um, yeah. And. Um, uh, I didn't have any regrets, and I'm totally honest about that. And I, I don't have this feeling that when I go in a badminton stadium or a tournament, I, I I have a bad feeling about being here because I have regrets. So I have, I don't have that at all. I only have positive feelings. So that's. Uh, so it's more about I, I your, to... your work with your feelings uh, and and feel, feeling your body, and feeling your mentality. Are you? Are yeah, you I think what, one thing that I would be honest about and say that I I can imagine that. Lin Dan and Chung Wei are feeling the same. You, you're gonna have to understand that that playing with pressure for you know being in this at the top and and when you enter the court, no matter where you are in the world, you're gonna have to win. If yeah. you don't win, it's a disappointment. Something is wrong. La la la. I can uh, and and if you for the in these these are national heroes. You know they they everybody in these countries they expect them to win no Absolutely. matter what. No matter what and happens, it, yeah. And how do they feel and what they uh, want to do, yeah. There's a huge difference between doing that for two or three years or doing it for 11, 12, or 13, or 14 years. I absolutely agree with and, you. And, 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 and playing with that kind of pressure for, for my side, you know, I don't know, 12, 15 years, and, 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 
Uh, I had 11 years without losing to one European player. It's, it's, yes, I'm proud of that, but it also took, <laughs> it's a lot of pressure to, to, to carry on your shoulders. And, and, and at some point, it's going to take its toll. You know, the, you, are, you are taking everything out of your, your system, mentally, physically, everything. And that's, these players, they, they are born to do that. And I feel I'm, I, 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 was, that, that was my, I was born to do that. And uh, I gave everything, and uh, at some point, it's, it's, it's enough. It's, uh, you, you have no more to give, and if, if you feel like that, I think it's time. Now you have an, uh, or an, like a natural next step, so it's great. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, I, um, uh, my, my questions are going to the finish, yeah, the list of questions, and I have a few more, uh, maybe uh, like personal questions, one or two. Uh, when, when you've heard, uh, I think it will be very interesting for uh, Ukrainian audience, first of all. Uh, when you uh, hear a word Ukraine, what maybe one, two, three things come to your mind first? Uh, if to be honest, yeah, maybe even some bad things, but <laughs> very no. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is yellow and, and blue. Yellow uh, and blue, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, and then I don't know. I actually, uh, yeah, I don't know what comes to my mind. It's like uh, even 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 maybe uh, when when you think about Ukrainian sports maybe maybe you know someone like some famous names or something like this <laughs> yeah um, no uh, I, I, I'm trying to, to, to say what, what, what would I think of in, in, in this uh, this aspect uh, <laughs> but maybe may, maybe it was the world championships in football yeah 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 <laughs> so maybe that, that maybe, and, and, maybe and Andriy Shevchenko maybe Klitschko Vasily Lemachenko, I know that you like to to watch some sometimes sports, uh, not only badminton. Yeah, you said you said Shevchenko, or what did you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, Shevchenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that I, I did that, but that's a long he, he, that's a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. for him, yeah. Well, um, yeah, ten years so, ago. So, 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 yes, exactly. So, so, no, uh, and then I think of some of the Ukrainian players, and I, I, I actually. See uh, quite a lot of passion when I see Ukrainian players play, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 the same as Ukrainian players or Russian players. I feel that uh, because they, for me, they look to have this kind of a uh, fighting attitude, and they are they are quite tough in their way of uh, uh, in their way of approaching the game. Uh, you also see, you can feel. I don't know what they're saying, but you can feel that coaches are being quite tough to the players. And in some ways, I actually like that um, because it seems like okay, the coaches can they can be tough to the players, and they still have a good bond between them. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and if I think there is a lot of potential in the in 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 Ukraine, I think in in Russia as well. I think, um, but they need they need a culture. They need some, and they still need to find their way in saying okay, this is how we do. If we get young players. Not only one player or two player, but let's say ten or fifteen players. Mm -hmm. This is how we do. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna raise them in this way. We're gonna put up the culture for them in this way. Then uh, I have no doubts that they have the mentality and the uh, the attitude to to do something big. But we need to do it from a very early age. Great. Yeah. Hope uh, that uh, sooner or later we will see also our great players who can compete at least on the European level and to represent our country. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, Peter, uh, it's uh, my personal invitation. Uh, I'm sure that you have never been to in Ukraine for the moment, but uh, if you think of uh, spending uh, your weekend or time somewhere in a big, nice city, I invite you to come to Kyiv, to Ukraine, it's our capital. I'm sure that you will enjoy it, especially if it's a spring, summer. So if you decide to spend the time with your daughters in some unusual place, but very nice, lovely, yeah. really. Uh, you are welcome to Ukraine. And, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you very much, and thank you for asking a lot of good questions here. Peter, I, uh, I hope that uh, this interview was not boring for you, and uh, no, not, not, at not all. too many questions uh, that uh, repeated some interviews. I tried to find some special ones. <laughs> I, I think these questions were very good, and they show that you are you are a lot into the game, and you're also a very clever journalist. So, 
So you will ask the questions in a bit of different way than, than normally, and I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Peter, thanks a lot for for taking the time. I understand that you had a tough day uh, with soul trainings and uh, preparing. So uh, we are finishing our interview right now. I will uh, put uh, all the questions onto the paper and uh, we'll uh, maybe produce interview in two languages. First will be English for sure, yeah? So you can share it and uh, with with the audience. And secondly, it will be also in a, in a language uh, Ukrainian, uh, uh, Russian. Uh, it depends, yeah. Plus, I will add like a recording, audio recording to that articles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Uh, Let's keep in touch, and you can send you can send the information for me, and we'll take it from there. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Peter. Thanks a lot, and uh, keep in touch. Bye bye. Bye bye.